Hi, it's Sachi Pucci, and today I'm gonna make dancehall like it's 1985. In this video, I'll produce a classic mid 80s digital dancehall rhythm using Ableton Live and a selection of plugins that emulate instruments and effects of that era. In 1985, Jamaican producers like King Tubby, King Jummy, Stevie and Cleavy, and Bobby Digital revolutionized the production of dancehall music. They replaced acoustic drum kits and electric guitars with synthesizers and drum machines, spawning a new genre that became known as digital dancehall. Music specifically made for the dancehall had been around for a while at that point, for example in the form of Rub-A-Dub, a style of reggae played by sound systems with DJs toasting on top of it. Dancehall producers were experimenting with uh, electronic drum kits like the Simmons SCS5 or early digital synthesizers like the Yamaha DX7. Apart from that, early dancehall was still produced the same way reggae had been for more than a decade. Real instruments played by musicians in a recording studio. This dramatically changed with the release of Under Me Slang Tang by Wayne Smith in 1985. Singer Smith, producer King Jummy and keyboarder Noel Davey used only one electronic instrument to produce the whole rhythm. The Casio MT40, a cheap battery-powered home keyboard never intended for professional use. They used it to replace the whole backing band and while the Slang Tang rhythm still contained most of the familiar elements of a classic reggae tune, it sounded radically new and different. Slang Tang was not the first electronically produced reggae rhythm, but it was by far the most notorious. It became a huge success in Jamaican dance halls and radio stations and ended up on more than 300 records. Digital dancehall was born. It quickly evolved into raga and spread around the globe, heavily influencing late 80s US hip hop as well as early 90s UK jungle. For me as a synthesizer enthusiast, this is an amazing story because in its essence, digital dancehall is pure synthesizer music, but it also carries the DNA, the heritage of decades of Jamaican music and culture. It's the product of a unique collision of technological and cultural innovation that could only take place in mid-80s Jamaica. Popular choices of early dancehall producers were budget-friendly digital drum machines like the Emo Drumulator, Oberheim DX or Roland TR-707. I'm going with the Oberheim DMX and the Emodromulator kits by Samples for Mars. 80s reggae and dancehall were dominated by three basic rhythmic patterns which are still around today. One drop, steppers and rockers. I'm going to record both a rockers and a steppers beat which I want to alternate in my track. As you can hear, I have added some effects to the drums already. On the snare, for example, you can hear altiverb with a Grampian type 666 spring reverb from the mid 1970s. The DMX toms get a little slap delay from Soundtoy's Primal Tap. First loop is fine, next comes the rocker's rhythm. Bringing in the Oberheim DMX for some variation in sound. When it comes to keys, early dancehall producers went with the most affordable options of their time. Popular choices include the Yamaha DX series as well as the Casio CZ series. I'm going with Aturia's recreation of the Yamaha DX7 FM synthesizer. It comes with the original factory presets from 1983, which is great to recreate the sound of that era. The DX7 runs through Aturia's Space Echo Emulation Delay Tape 201, Yuhi's Twangstrom Spring Reverb and Phase 3 by Audio Damage, an emulation of the Mutron Biphase from 1974.
And again, I'm recording a couple of variations for later use. In more traditional reggae, I would now add some bubbles and highlights to get the chord pattern grooving, but I want to stick to that more reduced aesthetic here, so I'll leave it at that. When it comes to bass, for me, the classic mid-80s dancehall bass machine has to be the Yamaha CS1. This battery-powered analog mini mono synth delivers some serious low end and it can be heard on countless records. Contact's factory library contains a few nice bass patches made with the CS1 Mark II and I'm gonna use one for my tune. Of course, I don't whoop out a bass line just like that. It took me at least half an hour to nail each part, but through the magic of editing, it looks like the easiest thing in the world. Now that I have a basic rhythm going on with drums, bass, and chords, I want to add some melodic elements. I'm gonna start with Roland's emulation of their own SH-101, an analog monosynth from 1983. The SH-101 runs through the Arturia tape delay and got Phaser, a modulation processor by D16. Another 80s staple synth from the Roland Cloud is the Juno 106, which I use for this pad sound. And of course, I want to include the instrument that started it all, the Casio MT40. I'm running the organ preset of the MT40 through Color Copy, a bucket brigade delay by Yuhi. The MT40 sounds on this track come from Gold Baby's excellent Digital Dancehall Revolution sample pack. This characteristic sound comes from the Koran DS7, an odd percussion synth from 1980 that can be heard on many dub records. Automation is key to bring any track to life and in the tradition of reggae and dub, I'll record some send automation live. On my return channels, I have Atoria's emulation of the EMT-140 plate reverb and Echo, the excellent delay by Ableton. Now I have two basic parts going on, some variations, so it's time for me to sit down and turn these basic looms into a full-length arrangement. And that's the finished track in the background. I added one or two more instruments and refined all sounds with effects. My original plan was to alternate between the A and B part, but during arrangement I came up with the idea to interweave them, which you can hear now. I think I'm done for today. Uh, my first digital dancehall rhythm turned out fine. I'm pretty happy. Uh, I like it. If you like it too, you can find it on my Bandcamp or Patreon. And for my patrons, I also include the stems so you can make your own remix. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.